Hi guys and welcome back to another Ibricorp video. Thank you for coming back and checking out the channel today. Absolute pleasure to have you back. And today we're going to be looking at M Remote NG. As it describes itself, it's a multi-remote next generation connection manager. I use it personally every day in my job working in a Windows environment, but it's also useful for Linux and other operating systems as well. And it's going to help you consolidate all of those connections into one place to help you manage all your servers and resources efficiently and securely. If you like what we're doing on the channel, please remember to like and subscribe. You can also help support us on our website by signing up for our membership to help us give back to you, our community. Also welcome to join us in Discord where we can discuss the topic of today's video and anything else that has been coming up recently. So without further ado, let's just get stuck into it. So guys, today we're gonna to be looking at something that we don't actually have to install on our server, but lets us access our server and other servers in one helpful place. I discovered mRemote NG only a few months ago, and that was from a colleague. I had seen that he'd used it for all of his RDP connections. And in my line of work, we have to access many different virtual machines and hosts from inside and outside of our local networks um, across the state. So this tool is actually very helpful for those who A, are either on the road and have many different ways they need to connect to things, uh, B, they possibly just have a lot of systems at home, a lot of operating systems, VMs, SSH, all of that stuff, and are at a point where they want to help organize in one easy to use place. And that's where mRemote NG is going to come in. So mRemote NG is a fork of mRemote, which is an open source tabbed multi-protocol remote connections manager for Windows. mRemote NG adds bug fixes and new features to mRemote and allows you to view all of your remote connections in a simple, yet powerful tabbed interface. So that's in their own words. We're gonna show you exactly what it looks like once we get in. But for those who are wondering, you know, is it for me? Here's the supported protocol. So you can do RDP, VNC, SSH, Telnet, HTTP and TTPS, R login, raw socket connections and PowerShell remoting as well. So it's extremely useful to system administrators, but also to anyone else who like us are home labbers running maybe various virtual machines docket containers, whatever the case might be, uh, and you want to access your hosts or the virtual machines themselves. So this basic screenshot gives you a rough idea of what it looks like, but I'm gonna show you in the actual app because there's, there's a lot more to it. It's also worth noting as well that they have, of course, their own official documentation, which is pretty extensive. So I really recommend you guys check that out if you decide to pick up mRemote NG and give it a play. Um, they didn't approach us for this video. This is just a tool that I thought was really helpful. So it took me a long time to find it. I'm hoping it helps someone else out who might be interested. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is actually download the app. So let's go to download. The website, by the way, is mremoteng.org and we're gonna go for the stable release. Here we are on the installer. Let's go through the wizard. We'll accept, click next. And it's gonna ask you what features you wanna install in the uh, installation. So we're gonna go with complete, which is already by default. If for some reason you didn't want putty NG, you didn't want a desktop shortcut, etc., change that there, click next and click install. Now, I think I mentioned it earlier, but this is targeted at Windows users. And so I don't know about you guys, I know that there's plenty of us that still use Windows as our main desktop, but want an easy way to access all of our apps. Now I have shown you Termius in the past, even just as late as the last video for SSH connections. And that does a fantastic job, especially if you're using a lot of Linux environments. But using something like mRemote NG, if you're more Windows heavy, but also use uh, Linux environments, why not? Even if you're just solely Linux, I think it still does it justice and handles everything that you need perfectly fine. Okay, so it started up for the first time and it's gonna ask for automatic update settings. We're gonna say, go ahead and use the recommended settings, or you can customize them as you like. Now, heads up, you're about to get flash banged. And here we are. So when you first start it up, it is a very bright white. The good news is that we can change that. So go to options, go to the theme, and enable themes. Now you're gonna get a whole bunch of stuff. One extra thing to note is that you can actually customize each theme the way you want it. So these are just sort of templates, if you will. We can go with uh, Visual Studio 2013, for example, maybe even 2015, whatever the case might be. All right, so now that we're in and we have a nice dark mode going, let's figure out what we can do with this. Now, what I'm gonna do first is actually import a configuration from my live work environment. 
which is another benefit of the app. So you can export and import configuration from anywhere that you already have it. And you can also reconnect to all the open connections as well. So let's click on import and import from file. Alternatively, we can actually import directly from Active Directory or from via a port scan. Now that's really handy. Like I said, if you have a very heavy Windows environment, pulling straight from Active Directory is amazing. So let's go with a file. Now I've picked my XML and if we just export this, you can see here our export is there. So these are all of our connections that we pulled through. And so these are some of my work servers, for example, that we manage. So easy enough, we can see exactly what they are. Now, if you scroll down to the bottom here, I'm gonna show you an established one. So Ibruin, for example, here's what it looks like in its configuration. Let's expand that out, expand it out a little bit more maybe. You can see, so we can put a name, our description, um, and we can change the icon. So let's change the icon, for example, if we just click here, it gives you the icons. So you can select what kind of machine it is. If it's an ESX host, is it a virtual machine? Is it another M Remote NG? We can do that as well. So select the icon that suits, then we can add our host name, username, password, domain. The protocol is of course the important part. If you're accessing a Windows virtual machine, obviously RDP is probably gonna be the option you're gonna select. Um, alternatively, then you can pick all your other options. So we can go with SSH for example. So just for us to demonstrate, what I'm gonna do is create a new connection and we're gonna do an SSH one first. So let's do that. So let's go with name and we'll call this Romulus. Description is media server. For the icon, I'm just going to pick web server, that suits me. Then we'll put in the IP address and we've selected SSH version 2. We can see the connection is there, let's double click that. And it's going to ask us to trust it, we click yes, and there we go. We have SSH now running. Now let's say we want to open up another connection simultaneously. Pretty easy, all we have to do then is select the connection. In this case, I've got our Windows machine in the cloud, let's double click that. And here you can see we're now connected to Windows as well. The other thing is sometimes people enjoy the popping out function of RDP. So what we can do is right click and select full screen. That will then actually switch it out and connect it through RDP. Now, the other tools we have, if we go to tools, we've got external tools, port scan, components check, and SSH file transfer as well. So let's go with port scan, for example, and we'll run a port scan on our local subnet here at home. And here we go, we've started finding some exposed ports here, port 22 on these hosts. Scroll down a little bit further, a little bit further up, and we've got port 80, 443, and 22 and 80. So obviously 22 is SSH ports, which is not unexpected, but it gives you an easy way to diagnose your network and see where your ports and your holes are in your firewall. So guys, I think you get the gist of it. So the last thing we're gonna do real quick is run through its options menu. Just to give you an idea on what it's capable of. So we've got startup and exit. So we can change uh, a couple of the options there. Do you want it to reconnect to previously open sessions? So you can just go straight back into wherever you left off. Allow only a single instance of the application and check the proper installation of components at startup. You've then got appearance options as well. This will help improve your experience depending on what you want to achieve as well. We've got our notifications here as well and where the log file is being saved. Then you have options for connections. Now with RDP, how many times do you want it to connect or reconnect? And for default credentials to use, you can set these ones. Now with the credentials, if we want to set a default, it basically means let's say you know for a fact that all of your virtual machines have the same login and password. It makes sense to just put this option in, save you having to enter that on each connection setting. Now we can actually also connect to an SQL server and have SQL store our data for us. That's a little bit more advanced, so we won't need to do that today. Updates, what kind of updates you want to pull through. You remember at the start, we just said set it up for us. This is the options that it selected. We have the option to change that if you want to as well, how often you want it to check, etc., etc. Then we have the theme, like I said earlier, so we can actually modify the theme if we want. And so again, I've just switched it up and gone with the Dracula one, for example. Now, alternatively, like I said, you can actually just click new, create a theme for yourself. So it will copy the current one that you have and then it will allow you to customize it any way you want. So you can then change the colors of pretty much anything, really. Um, you have all these options and then you can make it the theme that works for you. For security, you can also encrypt any connection files that you create and then you have advanced as well. So you can do a couple of things for PuTTY to configure PuTTY sessions and things like that. So obviously if you didn't know, it's using PuTTY for this SSH connection and PuTTY is 
plenty stable and it's been around for a long time so if you're frequently using ssh then you've probably already known about putty anyway if you wanted to go further in a connection we can right click select putty settings and then it will take you into the putty settings that you're probably more familiar with as well so guys that pretty much covers m remote ng it's a nice quick one for you today i hope it's a tool that you might find useful i definitely do and i know many of you who are using windows environments will find it useful as well especially once you start getting into the numbers of having to maintain multiple systems. It's a very, very useful tool, free and open source. What more could we ask for? Thanks guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and we can't wait to see you in the next Ibrakov video.